So, WWDC. iOS was exciting. Uh, we got some great features that Android, yeah, has had for quite some time, but now it's on an iPhone. Some of these I do, really don't really care so much about, but some I really do, like locking apps. Being able to change the lock screen controls, that's amazing, been wanting that for quite some time. But the things I don't really care about is like changing the colors on your apps or rearranging them how you want. I like to keep my phone really minimal, uh, so it doesn't really affect me. I literally just have my girlfriend, some pictures I've taken of her as like the front and center of the homepage, and then I have like most apps that I use at the bottom of the dock. And then we've got Mac OS, which is, Ah, I can't wait for that. I can't wait to be able to like mirror my phone um, and use it however I like on my Mac. Uh, the amount of times that I've left my phone upstairs, bear in mind, I'm at my girlfriend's place at the moment and it's a three story townhouse. So it's like, oh, okay, well, I have to go all the way upstairs to go grab my phone. Not anymore. I could be more lazy than ever. And then iPad OS for me, uh, just a quickie comment on that. Well, there isn't much to really comment on. Yeah, going from what I said in my uh, previous two videos about the iPad, uh, Apple needed to sort of just make iPad OS and Mac OS and they didn't. I think it's clear now than ever that no matter how amazing these iPads can be in terms of hardware, when it comes down to the software, they do not want to make a Mac into an iPad or an iPad into a Mac. They're gonna keep it separate, guys. So I think we just have to give up on that dream of having the iPad as a Mac alternative, unless Apple ditches both product categories and just combine them into one, which I'm not gonna do because of revenue sales and the investors are gonna be like, why did you get rid of the iPad? Why have you gotten rid of the Mac? Sounds are gonna drop, you're gonna lose money. Uh, we're just at that place at the moment. I don't think they'll ever do it. Uh, there are rumours about a foldable Mac, but yeah, again, that remains to be seen. Uh, WatchOS looks great. Uh, not much to comment on that as well. I mean, uh, Whoop is probably going to go out of business. The, the ability to be able to um, do what a Whoop does now is pretty cool. So, yep, yeah, awesome. And lastly, there's like Vision OS, which... The one thing that stood out to me was like the widescreen aspect. Um, I think that's really cool for if you're a video editor or you're, you know, or controlling multiple apps at one time. Doesn't entice me enough to bond to buy one, especially now it's come to the UK. At £3,500. Um, no thank you. <laughs> Though saying that, I am going to try it out. I'm actually really excited. I'm getting my girlfriend to go with me to the Apple store to try it out um, later next month, so quite exciting. Anyways, on to the big star of the show, Apple Intelligence. Man, this looks amazing. Please take my money. But when I say that, and this is the whole point of the video, is like, I'm having to now get rid of my iPhone mini, which I dearly love. Let me just take it out of my pocket right now. I dearly love this thing. It's small, it's light. Um, I'm sure the titanium build, which it, you know, is, is also light, you know, it's, it's great and all that. Only downside is that it's got a big display and I don't want that. But in order to get Apple intelligence, you need an iPhone 15 Pro or a Pro Max. And it just kills me, it really kills me. I understand in terms of the hardware, and this is where people sort of think straight off the bat that Apple is deliberately only giving us Apple intelligence on the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro Max in order to boost sales. They want you to upgrade. I think that's sort of partially true. We learned recently from Max Hook on Twitter, the iPhone in general uses like so much system memory already and there's very little left over for the iPhones that have only like six gigabytes, maybe five gigabytes of RAM. And if you look at the Pro models, they have about eight gigabytes. So if you have Apple intelligence on top of that, you're not gonna have much RAM left. So I understand why They've only kept it for the latest Pro models because they have that extra amount of RAM. So yeah, it, it is what it is, um, but it sucks at the same time. The iPhone 15 Pro does look like a very compelling device for me. The fact that it's a light of weight phone, the fact that the battery life is greater than my iPhone 13 mini. Cameras are insane. I get to zoom in a little bit more so I don't have to carry around my Lumix S5 everywhere that I go. Really would want to upgrade and I'll probably will uh, later this year. I'll, I'm gonna see what the new iPhones are gonna be like before I do anything like that. And also, just to touch on that, if I get a new iPhone, 
it's just going to be a great experience for me because I get to experience iOS 18 on that phone as well. So yeah, Apple Intelligence, let's get on that. Like, I, I guess the majority of its features you can already get from like Jack GPT, you can just like download an app, but the fact that it's on device uh, it's a little bit more compelling for me. Apple has made this big thing about privacy, which I'll get into in just a bit with Elon Musk. That's pissed me off. So the things I'm most excited about, Siri being able to look at my, oh, I just started off my Mac there. Siri being able to read what's on my phone and understand what's going on. I can ask it to do pretty much anything that I want it to. If there's something it can't do, now ask ChatGPT. That's like the number one feature that I really look forward to using in my everyday life. Uh, the fact that you can generate uh, emojis, uh, which is now called Genmoji. I think that's really cool as well. Um, I, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. But in terms of practicality um, and my workflow, I'm able to have basically something like Grammarly throughout the entire OS is really great being able to generate any images that I sort of am looking for, uh, which could help with things like thumbnails or maybe storyboard ideas. If I wanted to say to a client, hey, here's my idea, and I want to actually illustrate what I'm thinking, I can do that. Because at the end of the day, I really shit at drawing. Um, I hate having to draw when I'm doing a storyboard. So, and so having my iPhone do that for me, is great. I heavily use Siri uh, more than any other AI assistant. I think ChatGPT has been a close contender for the past few months, but I would say 60% of the time I would use Siri for controlling my lights, asking a few questions, uh, asking for the weather, anything really. But when I do get a response, it's fairly decent. My only problem is, is the connectivity. Connectivity narrows down to it understanding actual human context. Uh, so if I wanted to say, hey Siri, you know, uh, send this music track or play this music track on this device from another device that I'm using on. Like for example, I can say, hey Siri on my Mac and then ask it to play a certain song on my HomePod or my iPhone. Nine times out of 10, won't really do that. And it's frustrating because so I want it to. Yeah, we're getting Apple Intelligence on the iPhone 15, 15 Pro Max, but what about the HomePod? I mean, I know it's way under power compared to the iPhones. However, there's nothing else on that system other than Siri, so surely it can power through Apple Intelligence. I do kind of want to see a upgrade on that front just because those are my main areas of concern like being able to like for a Siri to understand actual human context on a home pod you know the, the thing that you're basically paying the most money for you're not paying you're not just paying for the sound experience you're also paying for that AI system being on that speaker I don't know what Apple's planning to do on that front and on the Apple watch too uh, it's, it's confusing times like you're showcasing this AI on your iPhone, but what about all the other Apple products? It's uh, it's interesting to see how that's going to take on. But yeah, let's get on with ChatGPT because that was the other increasing concern for many people. I don't think other people understood how it sort of worked, and it became even clearer when Elon Musk tweeted this. Um, what the hell? It's like he didn't watch the keynote. Like Elon is expressing his concerns here about about Apple using JetGPT as the underlining OS. And it's like, no, they're not doing that. They literally said that if there's something that Siri can't do, users can opt in to use another AI service like JetGPT because what Apple is doing here is if Siri can't do an action, um, then it will ask the user if they want to use something like JetGPT. Now JetGPT is actually going to be the first AI assistant that Apple is going to piggyback off. There's going to be other AI assistants, whether that will be Gemini or not, that's going to come onto the uh, iPhone as support. And at the moment it's privacy concerns with OpenAI, especially with the whole Scarlett Johansson case, like them using her voice basically without her consent. 
Yeah, it's that's um, without her permission, shall I say. You know, that's obviously concerning. But we need to not forget that Apple made this huge statement about private cloud computing and it's storing any information that it needs to store externally and not on the device into a private server that is ran on Apple Silicon. And so like, at the end of the day, surely that added layer of protection, whether it's a photo or some level of information that, get, get, that you're basically giving Jack GPT, it is secured view through Apple's servers. Like I, Apple is like one of the most privacy centric conglomerates out there at the moment. So yeah, Elon basically can't say shit, especially when the public have privacy concerns of their own in terms of what X has done over the, over the past year or two. What makes it worse is that this man has so much influence on like the media that they seem to have gotten on the bandwagon. I'm not saying that you should watch Fox News, but because that's like the worst American news channel on the face of the earth. You know, they, they got someone on, I forget his name. Um, he's up on the screen now. Like he, he, he basically just came on and just slated Apple called Tim Cook a hypocrite because they're using Jack GPT and that's not very privacy focused. Um, so it's like he's done on 180, like it's just pathetic. Man, do your research before you say anything. But anyways, guys, that is basically my take on what was unveiled with WWDC and the aftermath of it. But yeah, until we meet again, uh, my name's Harry Thomas. Thanks for watching.